In the 20th of June of 1939, Einkel, a German aircraft manufacturer, tests the first liquid-fueled rocket airplane to be propelled only by rocket. Its name is Einkel E-176, and even if it was able to reach insane speeds of 750 km per hour, it was far from being a usable aircraft. It was hard to control and extremely dangerous to pilot. The airplane was never really used, it was just a proof of concept, but something about it caught my attention. The engine. The E-176 used a Walter rocket engine, a bizarre engine that was described as a cold rocket engine that didn't use combustion. Now, I'm not a rocket expert of any kind, but I've been trying to build a rocket for a while now, and if there's two words that I wouldn't use to describe a rocket engine, it's cold and combustionless. So please tell me, how the hell did the Nazis pull that off? This video was brought to you by Raycon. Up until now I knew about three types of rocket engines. Solid fuel, liquid fuel and hybrid. But apparently there's two more. Monopropellant and hypergolic. Now, hypergolic is a type of rocket engine that is cursed and I don't even want to talk about it. But monopropellant is a pretty interesting concept. You see, in a conventional rocket, you have a fuel and you have an oxidizer. The oxidizer accelerates the combustion of the fuel and what you get in the end is very hot and fast exhaust gases. Fuel, oxidizer, bipropellant. With monopropellant rockets you have no fuel, no oxidizer and no combustion. The exhaust gases come from the chemical decomposition of a compound and to accelerate said decomposition it's used a catalyst. In the case of the Nazi monopropellant rocket engine, the compound was T-stop, which is a codename for hydrogen peroxide, and the catalyst was Z-stop, which is a codename for potassium permanganate. Now, before you guys go on a rant saying, oh, look at Intagza with his fancy chemistry and newfangled words like potassium permanganate, he thinks he's better than us. First of all, of course I'm better than you. Exhibit A. Second, this is not fancy chemistry at all. I have two words for you. Elephant toothpaste. Elephant toothpaste is a kid level chemical experiment in which you decompose hydrogen peroxide from the pharmacy into water, steam and oxygen using yeast. To make it fun you normally add dishwashing soap and food colorants. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Now, supposedly, if I pour this in, we're gonna have a reaction. Let's see what happens, I've never done this before. One, two, three. Oh boy, that's a little bit anticlimactic. I mean, I'm not doing a rocket with this. Of course that wasn't rocket-worthy chemistry. It's an experiment for kids. What was I expecting? What I need is to make this a little bit more grown up. For starters, I need to get higher concentration hydrogen peroxide because the ones they sell at the pharmacy only has 3% hydrogen peroxide. The rest is water. I was able to get hydrogen peroxide with 50% concentration, which is not bad, but the ideal would be to get something like 90% concentration. Unfortunately, that's borderline illegal, and the only person that I know with those kinds of connections lives on the other side of the planet, so I don't think that's gonna work out. I also needed a better catalyst to accelerate the decomposition, and after some research, I found out that a great catalyst for this reaction is silver. And I know what you're thinking, what do you mean silver? I mean actual silver. I bought about 500 grams of it. it, was pretty expensive, but I mean, it's for science. Don't forget to subscribe to my Patreon. Anyway, I'm gonna try the exact same uh, reaction with the exact same uh, quantities and see what happens. No, that's about, that's about one hero, hero here. Where's the other one? Let's do this. I can't believe I just made it worse. I mean, it's releasing a lot of gas. Uh, I need to find another solution. This is not working out. I think I, I might need some help to, to, to figure this out. To get the help that I needed, I reached out to the resident chemist in my Discord server, Matt. And he said, Personally, I'm no uh, rocket scientist myself, uh, but I definitely know uh, where you can find your answers about hydrogen peroxide decomposition. Uh, I would definitely check out the Explosions and Fire Discord, and they're definitely going to be able to help you with different catalysts for decomposing hydrogen peroxide for you. I hope that helps. 
I went into the Explosions and Fire Discord server, and after a long and dangerous conversation about chemical reactions, they suggested that I could use potassium permanganate, which is basically what the German used in their rocket engines. The weird part about all of this is that I already knew that. I knew that the German used potassium permanganate in their rocket engines, but for some reason, to me, potassium permanganate sounded like something that is toxic and really hard to get. I couldn't be more wrong. I got about one kilogram of it out of a agriculture website and it costed me close to nothing. Also, it's so safe, it's used in water treatment and as a disinfectant. Okay, so I found this, which is potassium permanganate and according to which I was advised by actual professional chemists, this is able to decompose hydrogen peroxide pretty quickly. So I never really seen it happening. I don't really know what's gonna happen, uh, but I, I hope I can I can do it properly this time because I'm expecting a rocket out of this. Yeah, let's try it out. A little bit of peroxide. Just, can you see the amount I'm, I'm using? It's almost nothing, so should be safe. In three, two, one. What? Jesus Christ! Oh my god, that's a lot of vapor. Did you get that, Katrina? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, so this time I'm gonna try to uh, dissolve the, the, the permanganate in some water because if I want to use it as a catalyst, I'm gonna have to inject it probably. Um, yeah, let's try that. Three, two, one. Out of morbid curiosity, I also did the elephant toothpaste experiment with a permanganate, just to see what happened. Here it goes nothing! Oh boy, it's all over my phone. It didn't even mix properly. Imagine if it did. I, I think I should be grateful that this didn't mix completely because I think this would explode, probably. That was really fast. Let me see if I catch the slow motion. <laughs> you did not. Sponsor time. Music is the color that fills the outlines of our mundane lives. Who said that? Well, me, of course. We all need some color during our sometimes boring routines. Even stale tasks become enjoyable once you have some fine tunes injected between your ears. And what better tool to do the job than Raycon earbuds? Raycon offers you a wide range of colorful and beautiful designed wireless earbuds they are not only comfortable, but very practical. Their amazing battery life allows you to jam for 6 hours straight without having to worry about which one of your roommates stole your charger. Since I got them, I use them for everything, but to be honest, the big change they brought into my life happens at night. My overclocked brain doesn't like to shut down easily, and to help with that I like to listen to ASMR. With Raycon I can do just that, without having a big lump between my ear and the pillow. If you also want some color in your life, Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash Intexa to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of other premium wireless earbud brands and sound just as amazing as other top audio brands. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit options and no dangling wires or stems. By clicking the link in the description down below, you're not only helping yourself, but also helping me make more videos like this. And to that I say... Danyavad. Back to the video. So, I have a reaction that might be strong enough to generate a decent amount of thrust, but I still need to design a rocket. And because the reaction is not crazy hot, this might be the first time in this channel that I actually get away with 3D printing a rocket engine. Firstly, I needed a component that is able to inject and mix the peroxide and the permanganate in the combustion chamber in an efficient way. For that purpose, I designed the swirl injector. And by design, I mean I stole the one that looked from science -ish design, and I modified it. Hey! This rocket injector uses two concurrent vortices to inject and mix the compounds. 
One of the vortices projects the fluid into a single point in a conical pyramid configuration, while the other generates an open bowl kind of flow that is similar to one of Victor Schaubeger's devices. Together, they mix the compounds thoroughly in an efficient way. In theory, this should work well. For the body of the rocket, I used an acrylic too because I wanted to see what was happening inside of the rocket. And to guide the flow, I designed the convergent nozzle to optimize thrust. Once I had a final model, I 3D printed the parts and assembled it. Support removal ASMR. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, time to assemble the Rocketo. The steam rocket, so let's proceed with that. I have silicone all over me. The rocket was ready, and I was very anxious to test it. But at this point, I still didn't have a decent pumping mechanism for the peroxide and the permanganate. So I just used two syringes. I know, I know, it's not very safe and professional, but what did you expect? This is in Texas. Okay, three, two, one. Wow! I'm all purple! <coughs> Jesus Christ! That worked much better than I was expecting. Look at her! I am. In three, two, one. That was insane! And, and look, this is hot, but it's not even close to melting. And I can, I, there is thrust here because, like, I can see this pushing. Like, this is really heavy and it's like, it's pushing down. I just got, I got a rocket engine that doesn't melt. It's literally just three different parts. Am I a joke to you? Okay, we are ready in three, two, one. Syringe exploded. Safety third, guys. It's boiling. Can you see this? So, overall, I'm really excited about all of this because I think I can make an actual rocket out of this reaction. And because the reaction generates steam, I can even make a steam engine, perhaps. But for future reference, I need to learn when to stop the project because I don't know why I only stop when things go bad. But anyway, I'm really excited. I don't think I can convey how happy I am about this. It's the first time on a project that I 3D print a rocket, and by the end of the video, the rocket is still in one piece. Look, it's right here. Of course, I still don't have any information about thrust, and I need to put a little bit more engineering effort into the pumping mechanism. But I can do that later. I'm gonna do more videos, you know? For now, I'm just gonna enjoy the fact that my rocket is intact, and also that for the first time in history, something good came out of Nazi research. I knew I was gonna regret putting that in the script.
If for some reason that I can't imagine you want to replicate this project, but you have no 3D printer, well, I have good news for you. On my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Squiggle, and he suggested, well, many things actually, but all of them sound interesting. I also gave away another 3D printer in an Instagram challenge at Intexe, and the winner was Spartanis. Congratulations to both, and good 3D printing. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Well, uh, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya! Look at that. The amount of vapor that releases is amazing. And it's all gone.